Hi, and welcome back once again to Air Engine Research. Uh, today it's raining outside, and I'm going to work a couple hours on this third plate that goes in between. I'm putting the holes in for the four valves that will be mounted on it later on. I've got the plates put on both sides today. I've got the five holes drilled in it today. And now I'm, I've got these four already tapped. I've got to do these four yet. But uh, I'll get it done pretty quick. Get rid of this thing so I don't get my fingers cut. But, in my hand. Everything takes so much time, golly. Just setting this thing up so that I can get, get to this to drill these holes. I had to take it apart and turn it around. I had to raise it up high enough so I could get underneath it to turn. And But I am making progress, and that's the main, main thing, I guess. I don't have a... I don't trust trying to use that to do any tapping. For one thing, it just doesn't have the proper amount of torque and stuff. I did finally have to replace the switch the machine kept stopping all the time when I would be doing something. It a little bit too much torque on it, and it would just stop. I thought it was just the torque of the machine being bad, but come to find out the, uh, the little rotary switch up here, that that was bad. So at least I got it replaced now. So I can turn it on and off, and it'll start all the time. Before. Sometimes when it stopped, I couldn't get it started again. Till so one day I just happened to tap on it a little bit like so. And found out that well, if you do that, it'll start every time. So I figured it was the switch. So I ordered one and got it, but they sent me the wrong one. I put it in, as soon as I turned it on, it blew the fuse and wouldn't do anything. So I called him and talked to him. I said, yeah, there's a couple of different ones, but for some reason, when I gave him the number that was on the actual switch, it wasn't the right one. So they made me take the plate off of the back of the milling machine and look inside on the plate itself, there was a number. It was either an M, I think, or a Z. And I had the Z, and naturally they had sent me the M one. So I got another replacement right away, though, after I called them. So little machine shop, I'll give him credit. They, they take care of you. I just called them on the phone, and talked to the man in the back of the shop, got it worked out, and he, I guess that afternoon he shipped it out already, because I got it within two days. So far this plate today, I've worked on it for, I on five hours now to get all the others a plate on the bottom side too, just like this. But I had to drill them and then tap them and then just countersink them. And like I said, everything just takes time. Today is the, uh, the 19th of April and I've got another 
couple of weeks and then I go in for my cataract surgery on my right eye. So then I'll be out for another week or so that I'm not supposed to be doing any bending over or lifting up anything. So hopefully by the end of May, but then the 27th of May, I've got a, an appointment with a back surgeon. I had a ruptured disc operation back in 1979, and they've made a lot of improvements on what they do with back surgery. When I had my operation, they just cleaned it out whatever was bulging on the disc, and then sewed, sewed it back together. They didn't put anything in between them or didn't do anything with, uh, like, anything to it at all. So all these years, I've had a lot of problems with the discs moving around in there, I guess, and all of a sudden it'll just pinch a nerve, I guess. Well, a couple weeks ago, I did something and it's been bothering me ever since. So I'm gonna have to see about, hopefully they can put an artificial disc in so that I still have you know, full movement if they have to uh, fuse it together, well, I guess they'll just have to do that. It's one of the lower discs way down at the bottom of my back. So I'm thinking that they do have to fuse it that it won't bother me too much because I still have basically the whole spine ahead of it. Yeah, there, I got those four done now. So, take it back apart. And, clean it up a little bit on the other side. is ready to put on. I've been having a lot of trouble with the uh, tube piping, trying to figure out how to get that in there so that it's set up the way it has to be in order to make it double acting. Hopefully I'll be able to get in and, and do the same thing on this cylinder and then on the third cylinder when I start trying to put it in. As you can see, I've got two cylinders in already. 
<clears throat> and the one that um, the plate that I'm working on now goes on the left side of that so and then I have to get those air lines for the second cylinder put in there that's only for one cylinder so what have I got I got two one well, there's one down on the bottom down here too you don't see okay, that's all set up I just, I just don't know how I could make it any less than that if I can get all three of them hooked up exactly like this I guess it'll be okay but golly there should be a better way So now I have the third plate on and the second valve system and cylinder mounted. But now comes the airline situation, trying to get those all in there where they have to be. It's going to be tight, but I think maybe I can get it in there okay. I still would rather have a different system, but that's what it's got to be if you're going to make a up and down double acting cylinder work both ways. It just takes that many airlines. Well, enough of my problems for today. Thanks for checking in on my progress. And if anybody would like to follow along, please subscribe. Check the uh, notification bell. You'll be notified anytime I put out something new. And longtime subscribers, once again, thanks for hanging in there.